Uh, what's up my little babies? It's your little big guys and I am back with another video. As I always say guys, if you have not watched my latest video, do be sure to watch it. The link will be down in the description below. Also be sure to give this video a thumbs up guys and subscribe if you're not subscribed and join the family. Jumping into this video, I was very shocked with this one. We have Lexi starting her OnlyFans. Now, this doesn't always mean that it's inappropriate content on this um, site. It can also mean that she's doing something else, but I'm not sure. Um, so, I'm not really sure what Lexi has going on. But, yeah, she has started our OnlyFans. Um, and what do you guys think about this? Okay, so we also have Charlene um, in her latest video. We're going to discuss, but in this first video that she um, put out what she was trying, um, I think it was the Hot Cheeto Cheese Balls with her kids. Now, in that video, there was something in that video that made me quite uncomfortable. I hope I'm not reading too deep into this. It's not a big deal, but I know body language and I'm not fooled by um, what I've seen. So. Now, from this video, it does seem like Charlene is trying from just picking up the energy in the video and the energy with Charlene and the kids. It seems like she's trying her best to do better, but possibly don't know how. Now, let me tell you guys where I feel like she went wrong in this video with Daya. Now, if you guys take a look at this clip, Daya is eating the seafood and it looks as if she's kind of having a hard time eating the egg. It also seems like she's having a hard time with the spices. Now, Charlene does look down and ask Daya, was she okay? And Charlene seems as if she's not trying to do anything wrong here. But it's all in Daya's reaction. Um, just, just gave me... Just, yeah, it, it's all in Daya's reaction. Now, for a mother to ask a child who's choking, are they okay? And the child to look up to the mother and instantly shy away. Um, and it seems like a bit fear there so i'm gonna put the on the screen and let you guys judge it for yourself but yeah you guys take a look at the clip and then i'll talk more about it afterwards the hot it tastes like soup food with no seafood hey ma i want the hot corn what? i want the hot corn hot corn hot right, corn mm. you all right there yeah <laughs> the hot corn it tastes like soup food with no seafood hey ma i want the hot Mm. You all right, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> the hot corn. It tastes like soup food with no seafood. Hey, Ma, I want the hot corn. What? I want the hot corn. Hot corn. I right, want the hot corn. Mm. You all right, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Can you breathe, Dad? Mm -hmm. I don't have to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, Daddy. Now, a lot of you in the comments might say that this is not a big deal, that she was just choking. But it was the eye contact for me and then the quick turn head with a cover. If you work with kids and you are comfortable um, with their body language, you would know that that was not normal behavior, especially for a mother um, and a daughter, um, especially as young as Daya, which is only four years old. For her to quickly look away, she was trying to not upset her mom or make her mom mad. Um, she couldn't tell that her mother was not upset at the moment. Well, maybe if she was, we don't know exactly how she acts off camera, but she was asking her, was she okay? But for some reason, Daya picked up another energy or she's used to getting in trouble. Now, you guys can say what you want to say. I don't think Charlene don't love her children. I think she do love her kids, but there's something she's doing without the camera scene 
dad's making her kids untrusting towards her. And this one right here really broke my heart a bit because Dea didn't know what energy her mom was giving her, um, so she took cover. And it's sad because this is her biological daughter, and Dea didn't know at the moment on whether mommy would get angry with her or was mommy just trying to help her. She was not comfortable with her mom in that moment. So that being said, and I know a lot of you get tired of me visiting the past when dealing with Charlene and Kamari, but if that is her biological daughter and she felt that way in that moment, just imagine like a lot of the um abuse that went on with kamari because you can't call that abuse because it's like mental abuse and you guys may look at kamari age and think that that does not affect her to this day but it does in my opinion and i also want you guys to check something out now this girl was going through kind of like um the singular situation as kamari and she was dealing with a stepmom who when she first brought her in she felt like the stepmom was good and she was um sweet and nice and everything about the lady um she liked and she felt like yeah she had a great bond with her until the woman got with her dad and began to treat her different so you guys i want you guys to not hear it from my mouth but hear it from her now she's gonna kind of help now she's gonna kind of help you to understand what it's like dealing with a stepmom who's wicked towards you and jealous of you and hate you on a low um so this girl didn't have to deal with cameras but she did have to deal with um, her stepmom really being evil to her and mistreating her um, and I felt like allegedly this is some of the things that Kamari had to go through as well so not exactly her every detail but like dealing with the bitterness and hatefulness of a stepmom who's mistreating you on the law so you guys check it out for yourself um, I went through some traumatic things dealing with my stepmom that I'm going to discuss in the video um, and this video is not to bash her or to make her seem like a villain, but at the time, she was definitely a villain. She was a devil in disguise, and she really, um, she really tainted my childhood. This video is also to tell you guys that it is okay to forgive. You can forgive, um, even if the person is not sorry, but I have not forgotten, and that's why I'm making this video, because I just want to bring, you know, someone else a light that might be in that situation or dealing with an unfair step-parent. So, you know, I had a diary, and I would write everything in the diary. I would write every feeling I had. I wrote down everything. And, of course, sometimes, you know, I would call her all types of stuff in that diary because that's how I felt. And I felt like I was being treated unfair at a certain point. Um, initially, she had treated me just like one of her own, just like one of her children. She, you know, it was perfect. But then she, she really started to make a difference um, with with me and her kids. For instance, like, she started she started doing my hair. Initially, she would, um, we, me, and her, me and her daughter both had perms, and we're a year apart, so we had a lot of things in common. So, um, she started off doing our hair. And... When she started doing my hair, my hair was like really short, really damaged. I, never, I didn't have a perm, but I didn't know how to take care of my hair. So she started taking my hair. It started to grow like wildfire. Like she knew what she was doing because her daughter's hair was like like down her back, like almost to her butt. And so she started doing my hair and it started growing like crazy. Once my hair started growing like that, um, I think, you know, I really took pride in my hair. I was so happy to see it like flourishing. Um, once she saw how happy I was in my hair, she just stopped doing it and was doing her daughter's hair, washing her daughter's hair, um, and wouldn't do my hair anymore when I was like 13 years old. So that scarred me because then my hair started breaking off and I'm like, why don't you do my hair? And, you, and I see you doing your daughter's hair every week and my hair is like breaking off and she's looking at me like, hmm, why is your hair breaking off? Like, that was that was mentally mind-boggling and hurtful to me because now you're making a difference. Like you start off doing something and then it's like, you just kind of left me out to fend for myself and which I did and me and my dad did the best we could with my hair and that was it, you know, it, it, it is what it is. So I started seeing signs of jealousy, but I wanted to tell you guys about the diary. So that's the second part to this video. Um, in this video, she breaks down a couple of times. Um, and it's pretty long, so I encourage you guys to go over and watch her part one and part two um, of Eva's Stepmom. I'm not sure of the full title, but go over and watch that. I did leave her name in the first part of the video. I'm going to put a bit of the second part of her um, part two of dealing with her stepmom and you guys just listen to this is and i hope you guys do go over and listen to the full video because it's a lot of the things that charlene did to kamari on the low allegedly um i feel she did a lot of mind stuff to her and if you pay attention this girl's still suffering with the damage that this lady did to her when she was a child and she was 11 and 12 and at the time charlene was dealing with kamari she was five um all the way up until her i think she was 10 or 9 um yet yeah, still dealing with charlene and even 
the previous situation of what happened with Kamari and the things that Charlene said about Kamari and the things that she said that Kamari did to her siblings and things of that sort and all the blaming her is still um mentally trying to drain Kamari and she wasn't even living with CJ to the point that Kamari had to go back home with her mom so I'm gonna put the second part and you guys check that out and this is going to wrap up this video and you guys leave your comments down below give this video a thumbs up um and join the family if you have not joined the family and subscribe and i thank you guys so much for watching but yeah here's the second part you guys check it out part one, basically part one i told you guys about my stepmother experience um which was not very pleasant i went through a lot dealing with this woman i've always been a daddy's girl and at the time like i loved and i hated him because i'm like you see what this woman's doing you see this is just unfair she's treating me this way but when they first met, and I know I mentioned this in my last video, I told you guys that she was the perfect stepmother. She was a perfect step parent. She was so loving. She was so nurturing. Like, I just, I was super excited that they were getting married because I'm like, finally, I get a two parent home. Uh, we established a great bond. I trusted her. I loved our relationship. I feel like the day after she moved into the house, she changed, like, completely. She no longer was the nurturing, loving, understanding woman. It was like she just flipped. She flipped. As soon as she got comfortable, I feel like she just changed personalities altogether. And I think it was because she saw how close me and my dad were that she was jealous of that relationship. That's what I've heard. I don't know. I'm not a psychiatrist. I don't know um, why that happened, but I think it was because she was jealous of me and my dad's relationship. For instance, she did not want me sitting on his lap. Like, I was sitting on my dad's lap one day in the living room, and she um, says, get off your dad's lap. And I'm looking like, well, I thought she was playing at first, so um, I thought she was playing at first, so I didn't say anything. I was just looking like, I thought, you know, just looking back and forth like, <laughs> and then she's like, get off your dad's lap. And I was like, she was serious. Like, after that, I knew that she, was, she wasn't playing. So I looked at my dad, like, I looked kind of weird, like, would I do something wrong? And so he tapped my leg, just said, get up, just get up, you know. And I go to the bathroom, another waterworks show. I just cry because I'm like, why in the world are you telling me to get off my dad's lap? Like, now your jealousy is really peeking out because... Oh, gosh. I didn't think I was going to freaking cry in this video. Like, I have no reason to... Oh... Uh, but she just really made it hard on me at the time. Very hard. And I, I felt just so wrong. Not only that, I had to stay in my room. I was not allowed to go out of my room for like two weeks straight. I couldn't go outside to play. The only time I could come outside was to eat dinner. <laughs> so I'm done crying, you guys. Let's talk about some interesting things that happened. This is where she tries to fight me. So I'm only like 12 or 13 years old. I'm not attitudinal. I don't, um, I'm not disrespectful. I've never been disrespectful to her. I never rolled my eyes. I never rolled my voice. I've never done anything disrespectful to this woman. So for her to get so angry as to where she wants to fight me physically, not even like whip me like a child, but fight me like this happened a few times. Every time my dad would act like he's trying to defend me or act like he might be on my side, it would just spark in her. Like she would just get so angry. And in this particular instance, she took it out on me because normally she would take it out on him and just um, like slam the door or stump off, throw a temper tantrum in my opinion. I've seen it several times. Um, normally that's what would happen. But this time it's like she was getting mad at me. Anytime she would get like irate, I would become mute because I would not want to escalate things. Plus, you know, it was just so easy to trigger her. I, I just would not say anything. Not to mention, I've never been into a fight. I've never, I don't even entertain conflict or confrontation. I don't get in confrontations. I've never been into a fight. So this whole situation, every time she would get physical with me, it would be so awkward. Not only because I'm not used to this interaction, but also because you're so much older than me. Like, why are you doing this? What fueled it? But all I know is she's walking towards me. I'm just standing straight, you know, looking non-bothered um, because I don't know what she's going to do. So she's walking to me and she was like, um, she started putting her chest on me, like, trying to like, like big boy me, I guess, with her boobs. And she has huge boobs. So she was like buffing my chest with her boobs, talking about, um, you are, you are a child. And so she's, you know, getting more angry, talking about, I'm gonna hurt you. So in the midst of that, my, so this is what happened. So I'm sitting in my room on my bed, not disturbing anybody in my own room, I'm minding my own business. And she comes in there yelling. I'm not sure what the conversation was about. I, I honestly, I don't remember those things. I just remember when it got physical that, so basically I'm sitting on my bed, she comes in there yelling about something, and uh, my dad comes in the room when he hears the commotion. And I, like I said, I remain you. I'll have never. You can ask anybody in that living in the house. I'll never raise my voice at her. So she had no reason to yell or to just keep escalating the situation because I was never disrespectful to her, and I never rose my voice. Uh, ro rose, yeah. I never raised my voice at her. I never rolled my eyes. I never got disrespectful with her. So she was the only one escalating. That that any type of um, conflict we've had, she's always been the one escalating. Cause I'm. I'm talking about I would never disrespect, you know, an, an adult at that time. I was not a disrespectful child, period. Um, my dad was super big on respect. <laughs> so, yeah. So, they're, as they're getting into it, she storms over to where I am because I have not said a word. And she starts doing this to my head. She was talking about me and as she was talking to me, she, she kept doing that. Like, she was saying, touch her something, something, something. And she was point, doing that, this to my head, right? And so my dad said, do not touch her, do not touch her. And she's yelling, I can touch her, I can touch her. And she starts doing it harder. And so, at this point, I'm getting scared. Like, dad, dad. So, I'm just saying, dad. And he comes in like Superman, picks her up again, carries her out of my room. 
And I'm just like, thank God, like you're finally stepping in. Like, I hope you can see that this is just getting further and further. 